Hello my friends! Today we're going to do a nice little landscape painting from beginning to end in real time. I have my 11 by 14 inch canvas behind me and it's all ready to go. But before we get started, have you noticed something? I have merchandise now. Yes, you can go to the pinned comment below and order your super sexy Paint Good With Chad t-shirt just like mine. Also, I wanted to thank all the new subscribers. We are now over 1,000. It is truly amazing. So please continue to subscribe and like the videos because it really helps out the channel. So now I'm going to shut up about all that and we're going to mix our colors and get started. Let's go ahead and start with our sky color. A whole bunch of white, a little bit of blue, not a lot, just a little bit. We want a nice light blue color. And then I want like a maybe a little gray color. Let's see. Ivory black to the blue here. Just kind of gray it out a little bit. Let's add a little bit of a lizard and crimson to that and give it kind of a purpley hue. That would be nice. That'll work. Yeah, that's what we need. Alright, so that's our sky color. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is add a thin layer of white to the canvas. So let's go ahead and do that now. Just mix it with a little bit of turpentine, not too much. Go ahead and it doesn't matter, you're just getting the surface down for the paint. Some people like to use gesso. I paint so much I just don't have time to deal with gesso, so I just buy the pre-gessoed canvases and get started that way. Now you can just take a little paper towel and just go over it and just, just wipe it down just a little bit. We're going to get some blue going. Start at the top and we're just going to do little, little loopy patterns. You want to make sure that you start at the top of the painting and work your way down. The top part needs to be the darkest and it gets lighter as it goes to the bottom. And I'm not really I got no plans right yet. I'm just putting some paint down on the canvas. And while you're doing this, this will this will start to give you some ideas. Just get free with it. Just get loose. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm just going to Start adding in some, some little clouds here and there. So I think my light source is going to start coming from this direction, so it seems to be working out that way. I'm just adding little cloud shapes here and there. I don't really have any set plans for this one. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. Now I'm going to get a little bit of that purple color that I mixed earlier. It's kind of a lavender color. And I'm going to go in on the, on the side where the, where the light is not hitting the clouds and just kind of darken in some spots with a little bit of this lavender. Now I'm going to get my fan brush and I'm just going to go over and, and make some little details of, of cloud shapes with a smaller brush. Yeah, just kind of jiggling it on the canvas. I'm not using a lot of paint thinner right at this point. Mostly, mostly paint. Just kind of 
jiggling it and rotating the brush around and creating little cloud shapes. I'm starting to think that it looks like it's blowing in this direction now. I'm going to take my mop brush and I'm just going to, I'm going to smooth all this out. So I'm going to start at the bottom, I'm just going to go side to side, and then I'm going to start going up into the clouds, and I'm doing like a little circular motion, and I'm barely touching this thing. Really light pressure. Just smooth it all out. So now I'm just kind of, I'm fluffing into the blue pulling upwards with my mop brush. I'm going to take my regular old painter's brush and just go side to side along the bottom here and just kind of blend all that in. There's a nice little sky. Now I think I want to put some mountains in this cloud. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some of the sky color and I'm going to add a little more phthalo blue to it. Just darken it up just a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing here. There. I don't want this to be too dark. I just because it's still in the background, you don't want things to pop too much when they're going to be in the background. So let's do a nice tall mountain right there. And I'm just using my palette knife and just scraping this on. Removing the excess paint from the bottom. take my painter brush and I'm gonna smooth this out. And there's gonna be some water down here so I want to make a, a hint of that mountain right here. Remove some of this excess paint. It's a little too much here.
Now I'm going to get my angle brush and I'm just going to kind of go along the top of this mountain just smooth things out. The palette knife application is kind of a way to get your idea set and then when you use your angle brush this is your way to go in and fine-tune everything and make it look the way you want it to. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and put another mountain back here in the distance. Watch this. Just going to put that just the top of it. Just like that. right into those clouds there. Don't even make a bottom. And it's way off in the distance there, so it's going to be nice and fuzzy and light. And it's going to be just kind of suggestive that it's there. I'm going to get my white paint, and I'm just going to go along the bottom of this, because I want to lighten this up a little bit more. So I just kind of went side to side, and now I'm pulling it up into the mountain. And this will give me a nice foundation to end things when I'm putting the details here. Okay, so now you want to take your mop brush and you want to blend things out. So I'm going to start over here with this mountain that's in the background. And I'm just going to blend out the bottom part of it a little bit. Maybe just kind of tap the top just to smooth it out just a hair. So now I've mixed a tan color and I'm going to just go from here and I'm going to lightly graze along the top of this mountain. This is the side where the sun is shining so I want it to be a little bit lighter than the rest of it. Now I'm going to take my dark brown, I'm going to mix it with a little bit of blue. I'm going to go over here and add the other angle with a darker color.
I'm gonna go ahead and add some more blue to this side. Now I'm just adding white. I'm just adding white all over this just to lighten things up a little bit. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to take my mop brush again and I'm going, to, I'm going to blur out the bottom of this mountain. It's going to go side to side and lightly, lightly pressing on. I'm just going to pull up to, pull up a little bit towards the direction that the mountain is going. So you want to leave the top of it untouched a little bit so you can see the details, but you want the bottom of it to be blurred out. And that'll give it a sense of depth, like there's mist at the base of this mountain. I'm just adding a little white blue to this, just to give it a little more texture. Seems a little flat, so that'll take care of that problem. I think it needs another little ledge here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put one right here. Just like that. Darken this a little bit. There. A little bit of blue to that. Just kind of blend this in a little bit. Tapping, light pressure. I'm going to take some of this brown and I'm just going to kind of tighten up these edges just a little here. Adding a little blue, blue to it. I'm using my angle brush. I'm just kind of, kind of tapping in little things here and there. I'm gonna take this brown and I'm gonna kind of trace out the shape of these mountains, like let's say right about here. I'm 
And this doesn't have to look perfect or anything. Because what I'm doing here is I'm making a reflection that's going to be in the water. You're basically just kind of mimicking what's happening over here, just you know, really suggestive and, and rough. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of want the, the colors that are going to be there to be on, on the canvas right here. So that's what we're doing. I take some of this light blue and just kind of go in here and fill it in. White and just kind of do the basic cloud shapes that are happening in here. Now I'm going to take my painter's brush and I'm going to I'm going to pull down. Make sure your canvas is on the edge of the easel when you're doing this. So here we go. I'm going to start here. And just pull down. So if I decide to put some water down here, I already have a nice reflection, a hint of a reflection over here from the... There, then you can take your mop brush and just kind of go side to side over it and just smooth everything out, just like so. Okay, now I'm going to take my Filbert Grainer brush and I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to add some little trees here in the background. Just tapping along the white. There's a lot of white paint here, so that's really good. So I have a good foundation to work on. And I'm just kind of tapping and pushing upwards with the brush. And I'm just using the bristles of the Filbert Grainer brush to add little trees kind of going up the side of this mountain here. Just like that. Just tapping them in. And you want to just you want to use a little turpentine when you're doing this. Not too much though. You still want the paint to be a little thick. Just bring it all the way back. Let them come up there. Now I'm pulling in some of the paint from this, the brown that's on there, and that's that's a good thing. You want a like nice little fade here, a little transition. Now we're going to go ahead and mix up our our colors for our foliage, and we want a light and a medium and a dark version of the colors we're going to use to create a sense of depth. So what I want to do is I'm going to start with the green. And I'm going to just put a little bit here and I'm going to add white to it. Just get a nice light green color. And I want to add a little bit of blue to this because this is going to be my, my background, my background green. So I add a little viridian. Maybe a little touch of phthalo blue. There's my background green. I'm going to do a darker version of that right next to it. 
and I'll use that for shadows and such. So now I want a little bit of an orange color with some white. Add a little red to that. Let's add some yellow ochre to the mix here. There we go. That'll, that'll dull it down just a little bit. And I'm going to use this Van Dyke Brown for the shadow color for this one. Maybe a little bit of Indian yellow. So now I want a kind of a red color, so let's get some of the Indian red. Mix it with a little bit of white. Now I want a darker version of this color. Do some, let's do a brown, nice brown color over here. Those rocks and stuff. So what I've done here is I've mixed a light and a medium version of the colors I'm going to use for my trees. And I'll start mixing along as I go throughout the painting. But I like to start out the painting this way just so I have a, an even amount of paint here to work with. And I'm going to tap in some colors here. And I'm just going to go randomly. The way you want to think about it is the blue is the shadow of the tree and then the color is where the sun is hitting the tree. So instead of, because since these are in the distance, your shadow color is going to be blue. I'm going to start off with some of this red color. So we're going to have some red trees in here. So let's just tap some of those in. Just here and there. We're going to make a fall scene. This is going to be like it's autumn. I always like to do that. I, I think it's more interesting than just all green trees. So I do this, I do this theme a lot. I, actually most of my paintings are done in fall. It's also my favorite time of the year. Okay, so now I think I'm going to do a I'm going to get a small round brush and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add some little little trees here and there that are more pronounced. Maybe some pine trees or something. Let's see. Yeah, so now I'm, I'm getting more, I'm taking more sap green. I'm adding a little more sap green to it. That seems to be helping. These trees are way off in the distance. So you're not going to really be able to see too many details. And 
and then we're going to put a layer of trees before this one, in front of this one, and you'll see how it gives you the feeling that it's way off in the distance. So I think the combination of the filbert grainer brush and then the, what is this, uh, number two round, it's a number two round, it's working pretty good. So I would, I would definitely, I should take note of that. Painting is all about experimenting. I, I always just kind of, I don't really have a perfect technique or anything. I just kind of, just kind of learn as I go. And, that, and that's what painting is all about. The more you do it, the better you're going to get. If you never paint, you're never going to get any better. Okay. Now I'm going to blur that out a little bit, so let's do that. Just going to tap it with the mop brush. Just tapping. That makes it look like there is trees in the background. Now I can get really crazy and start adding some more dominant colors here. So let's do that now. Okay, so now I have Van Dyke Brown mixed with a little bit of white. And then I have this orange, red, and yellow, and green color to work with. And let's go ahead and start adding some trees into the foreground. Okay, so now I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to do a little pull down from the trees that I put here before. So we need those to show up in the water. And I'm just going to make a little water line like right here. That'll work. Now I'm going to take my, my palette knife and get a little white. bit of blue and I'm gonna go around and add a little sparkle of some water right there. And that's where the pond is gonna be. Now I'm gonna add a little blue to my palette knife. Just kind of go across a little bit here and there. Put a little couple of trees coming off in the foreground here. I'm just gonna take my sap green with my filbert grainer brush and just kind of go right in here. Make a little embankment. See, I'm getting darker as I get in more into the foreground. So I can add a little more color to this. And I'm still gonna use a little bit of blue for my shadow color in this too, because I still want this to be off in the distance. I'm just tapping them in, and you'll start to see it happen as, as, you, as you go. Remember that trees get darker on the bottom than they are on the top, and that's kind of how I think of this when I'm when I'm doing it. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of this red color. source is coming from the left so I want to make sure that all the highlights are coming from the left.
Okay, now I want to put some of the gold in there. Make it look like a nice autumn day. It's always a good idea to take your palette knife and, and scrape a few little branches and trees with your knife. Just draw little lines in it, that's all. There. Now I gotta decide what happens with this. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe it's an embankment or something. We'll see. Let's get a little darker color here so I can kind of imagine what's happening here in the foreground. Let's see, a little, kind of a little roundabout, I guess. Pull it all the way out here, there. All right, I'm gonna add more sap green to that. And I'm just tapping in with my filbert grainer brush sideways. That's, that's pretty much the technique that I'm doing here at this point a couple of these trees in. All right, now we need some red ones. Now I'm going to just get some black on this brown brush and I'm going to just kind of go in and add some little dark, dark areas just here and there. Okay, put a little thalo blue on there. It's more up in the foreground area. There we go. little rocks with my brown brush. So I'm gonna add a little more highlights here. Yeah that looks good. A little more right right there. I must take some of this dark color and go underneath, kind of make the trees look like they're actually sitting on top of something. Give them a little bit of a shadow. Now let's take our palette knife, get a little white on there. Put some little 
little reflections and splashes. Okay, now I'm using a 1610 bristle brush made in China. And I'm gonna use some sap green and I'm gonna start tapping in some trees over here. So let's go ahead and just tap them in. And I have not mixed anything with this. Take my time and I don't want to want to make sure everything flows nice. I want some trees to come up all the way over here. Like these are off in the distance. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some colors to this. So let's see. I think I wanna nice red bush right here. So I'm gonna put some alizarin crimson on. Not even gonna mix it with anything. I'm gonna put a red bush right there. And I'm also gonna put another one right here. And then a little bit right there. There. And I'm just gonna add some highlights to those. A little bit of pink, just on the top. Do some rocks and stuff in here. Let's see. Mm. Well, first I think I want to do a. Uh, I want to do some tree trunks in the background. Let's go ahead and do some of that. Make sure you put a shadow on the other side of it. Scratch in some things there. Okay, let's do a couple of little rocks and stuff. Maybe there's a rock right here. There's a black and brown and then a little highlight on the top. There's a rock. Here's another one. Add some shadows to that. So maybe this is like a grassy embankment kind of a thing that kind of comes up like that. Yeah. And it kind of goes back there. That looks good. I'm going to take this Van Dyke brown and black and I want that tree to go. I want one to be here. I want one to be here. Okay. That'll look good. So. You know, I like to make these paintings when I'm out of ideas. I don't have to think too hard, I don't do any planning, it just comes out of my imagination. I usually like to do these on weeknights when I don't have a lot of time to paint because I actually have to go to work in the morning and I don't get to stay up too late. So, 
these are things I can knock out in a couple of hours. And it, it's good practice to work on trees. It's good practice to work on clouds. You have all the elements in this painting. All the elements that you use in any kind of painting. Like whenever I do a portrait or I do a dog or an animal or anything like that, there's always a background of some sort. A lot of times I like to put my portraits in nature and I like to do trees and clouds in the background. And doing these paintings over and over again is a lot of, it's a lot of good practice for me. Now I'm just going to take the light green and add a highlight to one side of this tree. Shut it back here. Here. I'll just scrape it off with it. Okay, that's what I wanted it to do. Okay. You know what Bob Ross always says, everybody needs a friend. So let's do that right here. My small fan brush at the top here. I'm going to leave this one a little bald, like right here, to make it more interesting. Yeah, this tree is probably having a rough time. Now, add some highlights to that tree. Just like here looks fine. Well, I guess it's up there too. Let's just darken things up a little bit. Certain spots that I'm noticing just to make it look better. Let's put a big rock right here.
I'm gonna put a big red tree right there. Let's we'll start in these trees in a little bit. All right, that'll do it. I hope you liked this video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. And also, don't forget to check out the Panko and Chad merchandise, which you can find in the pinned comments below. Until the next time, happy painting, be seeing you.